In this After Effects tutorial, we talk about glitching up an entire scene. Hey, what's going on internet? Josh Noel from Sunduck Film, and I'm very excited about this tutorial. I don't know, there's a lot of glitches going on, um, but the thing is, it's all very similar and it's very easy to do. So let's just jump right into this and let's get started. So I already have a composition here, I have some text. Now, of course, you can use a logo or any other type of object, but once you have your logo or text in here, what I suggest doing is go to that layer, the logo layer or the text layer, go up to Layer, Pre-Compose, and call it Placeholder. And this way, uh, this will be very easy to swap out later and it keeps things nice and organized. Uh, this is what I would suggest doing and click OK. So now of course you can go in this placeholder later and go ahead and adjust things if you want. So back in our main comp over here, I already have a background, but we'll talk about that in a second. So let's go ahead and create the distortion for our text and to kind of give you a quick overview how that's gonna look real fast. If we go into our text here, I can see it's kind of distorting a little bit, but all this is set up because of our glitch map. And a glitch map, it basically is all these shapes, once it loads up here, it's all these shapes that are just kind of meshed together to create this entire map here. And it's very easy to do, we're just using shape layers. So let's go ahead and create that right now. So let's go back into our comp here. Let's grab the rectangle tool at the top. Let's go ahead and maybe just set it to white, turn off the stroke uh, by clicking the word stroke here at the top if you know there was a stroke on yours. And all we're gonna do is we're gonna come here and just draw out like these very thin shapes. And we're gonna do it kind of fast, be very random about it and you know, you don't have to put a lot of detail to, into this. It's just random. And once you're done with, you know, one of your layers here, go over by three frames with the shape layer. Go ahead and go up to edit split layer and then just delete it. Because now what we're going to do is every three frames, we're going to create our own sort of custom design. So every design is going to be different. So we'll come here, maybe just do something a little bit different. So now we're say we're done with this layer. We'll go ahead and drag this endpoint in by three frames. Go over by, you know, three more frames, split the layer and delete it. And what we're doing here is we're creating, you know, distortion here. So basically what we want to do is go through this entire thing, you know, maybe three frames at a time. If you do one frame at a time, you'll get more detail. Or if you want less frames, uh, you can go ahead and do that. But the thing is, we just want to create something custom that's going to glitch this thing around. And as you see, I'm being kind of fast about it. I mean, it just doesn't really matter. And I'll be right back when this is all done. So now I have all my shape layers in here, all this distortion going on. And, you know, you, of course you can duplicate these shape layers so you don't have to recreate it constantly. It, but it shouldn't take a lot of time to do this. I kind of went overkill here to like nine seconds. You might only need to do like five seconds or something. So keep that in mind and it depends on the frames. But once you have all your custom shape distortion in here, and of course keep in mind you can download this project file as well so you don't actually have to do this. If you think it takes too much time, it didn't. It just took me like five minutes. So go ahead and select all your shape layers. We'll go up to layer, pre-compose, and we can call it distortion map. And click OK. Then we'll go up to layer, new adjustment layer. Then we'll go up to effect, distort, and we'll add displacement map. Then we'll set the displacement map layer to the distortion map. And of course we can turn off the distortion map down here. And as you can see, the text is being affected and pretty much anything that's that this distortion map is on top of, or the, sorry, this adjustment layer is on top of, it's going to be distorting. So as you can see, we see our text here is kind of, you know, jiggling a little bit, which is cool. But we can come here to the actual horizontal displacement and vertical displacement and start changing some of these settings. So we come here to the horizontal displacement. As you see, it gets a little bit more glitchy. And, you know, it's pretty interesting as you see if I bring it down, you know, as it's kind of moving uh, horizontally like that. Of course, you can mess with it vertically. I'm not a big fan vertically. I might just keep it at a five. But now we have this entire distortion map and we're looking really good. So let's talk about creating some of these other glitch elements like these lines up here. And it's very easy to do. We'll go back into our main uh, tutorial composition here and we'll grab the rectangle tool and we'll just draw out a very thin rectangle just like this. So as you see, we got that. And then let's go to the shape layer over here. And let's rename it just to like, I don't know, glitch one. And then we'll go to add and we'll add a repeater. And we'll go to the repeater one here and we'll increase the number of copies. And of course you can go into the transform repeater one and of course adjust the exposition if you really want. If you really want to have, you know, more fine line detail, you can do that. Uh, but once you're done with this, you know, we're looking pretty good. And we can put it like underneath our adjustment layer here. And let's see if it will see as it gets a little bit distorted as well because it's underneath the adjustment layer. Of course, let's rename this adjustment layer to, uh, 
you know, maybe map or like displacement map or something. I was going to call it map. But we'll go back to the glitch one here and we're going to use an effects and presets. So let's go to the effects and presets uh, panel over here and go to animation presets. Go into image special effects and we're going to use the bad TV three week and throw that on top of the glitch. And the only reason why we're using this is because of the wave warp. Uh, I will go ahead and, as far and just delete these three uh, bottom effects, the color balance and noise and Venetian blinds. I would go ahead and delete those because we, we don't need them. Just a wave warp. I like that effect. And of course, we kind of get this nice noise in here because it's set to noise. So now what we have to do is kind of trim this down because we only want this up here for like three frames as well. We don't really want this up the entire time because it's not pretty. So come here and trim it down to like three frames and call it a day. So of course, now we're creating these glitches and of you know, what I suggest doing, go ahead and start creating just a little bit of extra variations with these lines. And you know, do the same thing with the repeater. And, you know, we'll come here, increase the number of copies. And then we'll go back to the original glitch in here and, you know, copy the wave warp. And, of course, what's cool about the shape layer repeater effect is that we go in the transform repeater, set the X position down to zero, and then we increase the Y position if you want, like, this to be vertical. So that's always interesting. And, like, like I said, always, you know, maybe have this up here just for a few frames. And, you know, if, you want go, if you're going to go ahead and duplicate this, you know, maybe we want to take glitch one here, duplicate it, and, you know, offset it over here. Of course, what I suggest doing, just hit P on your keyboard for position and, you know, offset this into random spots. And this way, you will create a very dynamic, you know, kind of glitch in here. And, you know, what, even what I suggest doing, make something even smaller. Like, grab the rectangle tool again and, you know, make something very small. Yep. So, come here, copy the wave warp and paste that on top. Of course, if we need to make this a little bit bigger, go into rectangle path, break the link here, and set this down to two or something like that. So you can see a little bit better. And you see, it's just like a little bit more, another unique design, a little bit more thin and ready to go. So go here, offset that. So we'll go ahead and you know continue this sort of design throughout the entire you know timeline here for however long you want this to be, and we'll be right back. Okay, so now I have all my shape layers in here for you know a nice distortion effect. I only have it going on for eight seconds. Of course, once again, this is a very duplicatable effect. You don't have to, you know, continue to create your own design every single shape layer. So go ahead and duplicate some of those as well. Um, and it should only take, you know, once again, just a few minutes to do it, but this is how you can really get this detailed distortion. And of course, before we move on, you can always use different shapes. You don't have to just do use the repeater. You can use like a straight line like this. So I came in here and just drew out a straight line and threw on the wave warp and made sure it was underneath the distortion map. So this way you can continue to, you know, kind of create different shapes that kind of make sense. But of course, once you have all your shapes in here, kind of scattered out across the timeline, go ahead and pre-compose it and we'll call it glitches. So now we have some random glitches and our uh, text or logo distortion. Let's talk about variating this distortion so we can make some of this readable from time to time, of course. So, of course, everything's happening because of this adjustment in the layer. All the real distortion is this, uh, you know, displacement map. So what we need to do is kind of go up here, split this layer, bring in the endpoint by a little bit. So now we'll have some period of time to actually read or see the logo. And then it goes right back into the distortion. And we come here and just kind of break this up by a little bit. So it's not like constantly... Um, you know glitching the entire time, but you know this should be good enough. I think this would be good I think there's some you know periods of time where you can actually you know read this of course And one last thing I want to do is go to the placeholder over here and go up to effect transition linear wipe uh, We'll go ahead and just transition this on and we'll add a keyframe for transition completion Hit you on your keyboard to bring up the keyframe bring that back in time Maybe by like a second and set the cam uh, transition completion to 100% and then set the wipe angle to negative 90 degrees. And I'll just use this as a very simple transition, as you see, kind of transitions on from the left to right. And we'll increase the feather by a touch as well. Maybe bring that keyframe in as well. All right. So now that we're done with all these displacement maps, let's go ahead and select everything except for our background here, which we haven't gotten into yet, which we will in this next step. But select everything except for the background and pre-compose it. And then we can call this layer distort map or something like that, or distort sequence. Uh, it's really hard to figure out what's the best way to name these, but I'm going to go with distort sequence and click OK. And now let's go ahead and start creating this background over here and kind of creating this entire glitch scene. And then next we'll get into RGB splitting. But I'll go ahead and turn this texture on. And I'm just using a very grungy sort of texture here. It doesn't matter what you use. Remember, you can download these project files, of course. But let's go ahead and start perfecting this. So let's go up to layer, new, solid. And uh, where's that? Solid. Of course, I know the hotkey. We'll go ahead and rename this to uh, vignette and click OK. And then we'll go to the ellipse tool over here. Go ahead and just select it and then double click it. And we're creating a vignette. Go ahead, go to the mask one down here. Go to subtract. 
and hit F on your keyboard for mask, feather, and just really increases by a lot. And that should be good to go. Maybe you know, lower the opacity of this by hitting T on your keyboard. And let's bring that down by a touch. We might revisit that in a second. So let's go to our texture over here and let's go to effect, color correction, curves. And we're gonna kind of blue this out by a little bit. So go to the red channel. We'll bring the reds down by a touch. Go to the green channel and we'll take the greens out as well. And maybe we'll go to the blue channel and increase that by a touch. And then also let's go to the opacity of this layer here. And maybe break down the opacity by a touch to make it just a little bit darker. Then let's go up to effect blur, Gaussian blur. And it's kind of really blur out this background by a little bit because I don't like how sharp those uh, actual, uh, you know, slashes in the image are. And go ahead and check on repeat edge pixels. Then let's go up to effect simulation CC starburst. And this is where we're going to get a grid effect. So set the scatter down to zero, set the speed to zero, and set the grid spacing to two. And this way, as you see, we kind of have this nice grid in here and it kind of breaks up our background, which is cool and all. Now let's go up to effect, color correction, brightness, and contrast. And let's alt click the stopwatch for brightness and let's type in wiggle, uh, open parenthesis, three comma, 60, close parenthesis. And as you see, the background is now flickering, which is really cool. So we're looking pretty good. And then let's go back up to layer, new adjustment layer. And we'll put this underneath our distort sequence and we'll call this one uh, bad TV. And then we'll go back over to our effects and presets and grab the bad TV3 again. And we'll throw that right into there. And that's really gonna give you that nice distortion look completely like that. So really awesome. And then of course, I don't want this color balance. So I'm gonna go ahead and just delete that. I don't think that's needed for this. So now we have our three glitchy background elements in here. So now let's talk about RGB splitting. So let's go to our distort sequence over here and let's go ahead and duplicate it. Go to the bottom layer down here, go up to effect channel and we'll go to set channels. And uh, this is something we need to pay close attention to because it's a little bit kind of messy in here. I don't really think this is a good design for parameters. I, I don't know, it's kind of weird, but go to the set blue source and set that to off. Go to the set green source and set that to off as well. And I'm gonna go ahead and just solo our top, or turn off our top layer real fast. So everything kind of turns red, you know, pretty cool. Um, but then we need to go ahead and hit P on our keyboard for position. I'll click the stopwatch and type in wiggle open parenthesis, two comma three, close parenthesis. So this will offset the position by a little bit. And then let's go ahead and duplicate this layer, turn off the red channel, and then go to the green channel and turn, set that to green. Then duplicate this layer again, turn off the green channel and turn on the blue channel. So now we're gonna get these three separations of these colors and then we turn on our you know, original layer here and we get a very soft you know, distortion in here. Maybe set the red channel on top a little bit because I think I like red for being the dominant color. And of course, if you want to make this effect a little bit more, you know, intense, of course, go back into the actual expressions in here and maybe set the intensity of the second number here to a little bit of a greater number if you really want that. But I like this very subtle motion. So let's go up to layer, new adjustment layer. Let's go up to effect, distort, wave warp. And of course, we'll manually set the wave warp this time, but let's go to the wave type and set it to noise. And of course it gets a little bit crazy here. So let's go ahead to the wave height and set this down to two and the wave width and set that down to two as well. And it's gonna be a very nice subtle effect. Uh, as you see, it gets a little bit more uh, distorted, but go to the beginning of your timeline here, set a keyframe for the phase and go to like the end here and set the phase to like two X. So kind of wiggle around a little bit and let's go up to effect stylize glow. And let's make our image pop a little bit. And for the most part, I'm cool with these settings. Of course, maybe I'll set the glow radius down to eight, just kind of lessen up the effect by a little bit. And then of course we can rename this layer to uh, warp and glow. In my original comp over here, I have a lens flare. I'm using optical flares, which is a third party plugin. It's not needed for this tutorial. I just went ahead and did it for extra spice. Um, I don't, for a glitch tutorial, I don't think this is needed at all, but I'm gonna go ahead and just paste this in here. I'm not gonna show you guys how to use this effect because if you have it, you probably already know how to use it and you know you don't need it for this tutorial. But go ahead and paste it in here. I'll talk about some of the settings real fast. So I have a position X, Y keyframe uh, just to kind of reveal on my transition. Uh, that's why I did that uh, linear transition before. And I just went ahead and animated the brightness from zero to 130. And then I animated it all off. And then of course I went to the flicker parameters in here and set the speed and amount down to 20 and 38. If I go into the options real fast, um, I'm just using a glow and a streak. So pretty much that simple. 
And the good news is we're basically done, but there's one more element I wanna to add to this. Let's go ahead and select everything. Go ahead and pre-compose it. And we can call this one full glitch. Then let's hit P on keyboard for position. I'll click the stopwatch, type in wiggle, open parenthesis one, comma 20, close parenthesis. And this will kind of just kind of sort the entire thing. Not sort, sorry, kind of wiggle the entire thing up. And I think that's pretty interesting. Then hit S on your keyboard for scale and set the scale up to 105. And that would be great. And what's great about how this is set up, we can go back into the placeholder here. And if we want to add, like change the text a little bit later, of course you can duplicate the entire composition if you want to start the animation again. But if you want this to keep going, like come over here, split this layer, and then you can like change the text as well. So, you know, that should be, you know, a bit interesting. And if you are following along with this tutorial, this is what you should have gotten, or at least some of these elements for sure. So I hope you guys can go ahead and take some of these elements and create your own glitch distortion maps or whatever you want to call them. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did, please drop a like and subscribe to the channel for more After Effects videos just like this. And please be sure to hit me up on my social media networks. Those links are in the description of this video. And as always, thank you so much for watching the video and I hope you have a good day.